In the previous video we looked at how to get a sprite to bounce off a surface such as a horizontal or vertical surface. In this video we're going to ha have a look at how to get a sprite to bounce off another sprite. Um, it's basically the same idea but the calculation is a bit more complex. So uh, what I've done to start off with is I've created a program. It's got two sprites. I've used the football from the sprite library and then I've used the paint new sprite button to create the ring and what I'm going to do is try and get the football to bounce off the ring. So I've started my script for the football so when it's clicked it points in a random direction and then it repeatedly moves and if it's on the edge then it bounces. So if we have a look at what that does it'll bounce around but it actually goes through uh, the ring in the middle at the moment. So let's have a think about how we can actually get the football to bounce off the ring. So that um, green circle represents the thing that we want to bounce off, in this case the purple ring. And then we've got uh, the other sprite arriving uh, from a particular direction, in, in our case the football. So what angles are we looking at here? So we've got the direction uh, before impact. And this second line is parallel to that, so it's the same as the direction before the impact. It's just going through the point where the two sprites touch. And then if we draw on another line that goes between the two centers of the, uh, the sprites, uh, that's the red line there. So thinking about the angle of incidence, as we did when we were bouncing off a surface, where's that going to be in this case? Well, in this case, it's going to be there. It's going to be the difference between... Uh, the direction before the impact and the line between the two centers and just as in the previous cases um, the angle that it bounces off at is going to be a reflection of that, it's going to be the same angle so we're actually going to bounce off in that direction so it's the same idea but how do you work out that angle um, because they could, those lines could be pointing in any direction um, so what we know is we can determine the direction that uh, the sprite was traveling in before the impact because we've got that direction tile in the motion section. What we can also do is turn a sprite to face another sprite so we can actually get it to face along the red line. So if we take one uh, angle away from the other that gives us that angle of incidence there which we can then use to uh, rotate and head off in a different direction. So the steps that I've come up with therefore are these. So we store the original direction in a variable, uh, we'll call it angle. Um, then if we turn to face the other sprite, we can then work out the angle of incidence by taking the uh, original angle away from the new one. So that effectively calculates the angle through which uh, the ball has turned. And then if we turn 180 degrees minus that angle, um, that gives us a realistic kind of bounce. And I just came up with these calculations by uh, drawing a diagram and really only uses sort of GCSE level um, angles. It's nothing too complex here. So let's have a look at how we can actually do that in Scratch. So if we're going to store the original direction, we use we're going to use a variable. Um, we could get away with one variable, but if you if you're less comfortable with variables, to make it a bit clearer, I'm going to use a second variable called incidence. But you could just use uh, the first one again. So I'm going to create one called angle. And I'm going to create one called incidence. And what I'm going to do, well, first of all, I need to detect whether the football has actually collided with the ring. So I'm going to use an if, and I'm going to use a tile from the sensing section. So I'm going to say if we're touching the ring, which is sprite one, then this is what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do uh, in of those steps is we're going to set the angle so this is the original angle in which the uh, football was traveling to be the original direction. So the direction tile is at the bottom of the motion section. So set the variable angle to be the original direction. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this point towards tile to turn the football to face the center of the, the other sprite. So we're going to point towards um, sprite one. So if we just go back to my slide a minute, let's have a look at the next step. So we've done the first two, we've stored the original angle, we've turned to face the other sprite. We're going to work out the angle of incidence, which is the current direction, take away the original angle. So incidence is, we need to do a calculation. And going back to the motion section, 
it's the current direction take away the original direction which is stored in the variable angle. Now we don't need to see the angle and incidence up here so I'm going to untick uh, those so they don't get in the way. And then the final step, if we go back to the slide, is to turn 180 minus that angle of incidence. So we're going to go back to the motion and we're going to turn and again we need to do a calculation. So it's 180 minus the angle of incidence we stored in the incidence variable. Okay, so hopefully um, we've covered the four bullet points there. So if I run my program, it should bounce around and it should bounce off the, the ring in the middle. Okay, so that wasn't a very good angle. Because the angle is random, um, it sometimes takes a while for it to hit, but you can see it is bouncing off that um, sprite in the middle. Let's try a few more. Now what you might find is occasionally, and this isn't going to do it, you might find that occasionally the ball gets stuck, it kind of sticks to the sprite in the middle. And the reason it does that, if you think about what it's doing, is if it's touching the sprite then it's effectively rotating. And if you're moving quite large steps and you move effectively on top of the sprite, if you rotate you're still going to be on top of it. So sometimes um, it can get stuck because it will move onto the sprite and it will rotate and it will still be on it. So it will just go through the whole thing again. It will still be touching sprite so it will keep repeating that section. So what you can do is if you, if you have problems doing that, if you just back off a little bit before you turn. So if you um, just move backwards 10 steps and then rotate then that minimizes the likelihood of the ball getting stuck uh, on the other sprite. Let's see if we can see how that's working. Okay, so that's a quick demonstration of how to get one sprite to bounce off another one. Uh, obviously, because that uh, center sprite is fixed, that simplifies the calculations. If you were doing a snooker or a pool game or you had two moving uh, balls of different masses, that would be um, you know, a whole extra set of complications. Um, but basically the steps, um, if you want to bounce one sprite off another one, are these. If you store the original direction uh, and then turn to face the other sprite, subtract um, the original direction from the current direction and then use that as a basis for turning to face in the right direction.